Hi, everyone. Uh, David Wood here, and I'm joined by Brother Rashid. Today, we're going to be talking about Islamophobia and anti-Semitism. These are words we hear a lot with everything that's going on in the world. How are you doing, Brother Rashid? I'm doing good. Thank you, Dave, for having me. Have you heard these? Uh, have you heard these terms uh, quite a bit? I've been hearing them. Uh, I've been hearing anti-Semitism and uh, Islamophobia quite a bit. It's uh, really everywhere. Uh, whatever channel I open, whatever video, there there are some things related to them. And uh, the funny thing, or like the ironic thing, is we are living in a time where there is a rise in uh, anti-Semitism, but. People like Kamala Harris is talking about ways to to combat um, Islamophobia. Yeah, we hear this every time, and it's amazing how quickly it can it can follow. It could be, hey, what about what about this problem with anti-Semitism over here? And they'll they will just a politician will instantly shift from, yes, there is this growing rise in anti-Semitism, which is exactly why we've launched our seven point plan for combating Islamophobia. And you're like, wait, what? Well, what did you just say? Yeah. Uh, so yeah, there's this there's this ongoing problem. Uh, but uh, let's go ahead and start with Islamophobia. What what does this mean? Well, I mean, I, I try to Google it and, you know, different places give it different meanings. If you go, for example, to Britannica, um, it's fear, hatred and discrimination against practitioners of Islam or the Islamic religion as a whole. Uh, the term appeared as Islamophobia in French literature in the early 20th century as a de designation of anti-Muslim sentiments. So here you go, uh, one of the definitions. If you go to uh, one of the famous di dictionaries, uh, uh, Merriam Webster, Merriam Webster, it says irrational fear or aversion to or discrimination against Islam or people who practice Islam. And that would be sort of the etymological meaning, uh, Islam and phobia. Phobia would be an irrational fear. So, so uh, the, the the term is is made, and it's being used in a way similar to you know people have arachnophobia. They have a a phobia of spiders. Keep in mind, a phobia is not the same thing as being concerned about spiders. People are generally pretty careful around uh, around spiders. Uh, especially poisonous ones. Uh, but if you don't know if it's poisonous or not, people are generally pretty careful around spiders. That's not a phobia. Phobia is an irrational fear. Simply showing someone uh, who has arachnophobia, a mental disorder, um, simply showing a person like this a, a photograph or asking the person to think about uh, about a spider can can like paralyze the person with fear. And so... Yeah. yeah. So saying saying we have an irrational fear of Islam or or Muslims is saying that we have a that we have a mental disorder, <laughs> and uh, exactly. it, it's amazing to see how. Yeah, it's amazing to see how this is how this uh, has changed over there. So we have like the dictionary definitions, and then we have uh, uh, critics of the term. Uh, Andrew Cummins famously said that Islamophobia is a word uh, created by fascists and used by. <laughs> What was it? Created by fascists, used by cowards to manipulate morons. That's what he said. Um, and so, he, yeah, so he, he defined it like that. It, it, people often say it was Christopher Hitchens. Christopher Hitchens used it later. But you have that. And what, what really amazes me is how the meaning has changed over just the past 10 or 15 years by the people who use it. So if you go back and you, you, were, you were there, you were, you were experiencing this, 10 or 15 years ago, when people called us Islamophobes, it's because mm -hmm. we were saying, hey, Islam calls for the subjugation of non-believers. Islam calls yeah. for the execution of apostates. Islam uh, promotes child marriage. And we said all these things. So we're quoting the Muslim sources. And, yeah. they, and people would say, no, they're only saying this because they're Islamophobes. And yeah. so there, the term meant it was used to say that we're only saying this because we have a mental disorder. That's why we think Islam teaches these things, but it doesn't teach these things. That's how it was used just 10 and 15 years ago. Now you've That's got it. all of the uh, all the Dawah guys, all the Muslim apologists, they all 
uh, they all will call you Islamophobes, but now they admit that Islam calls for the killing of apostates and promotes child marriage and wife beating and calls for the subjugation of the world. And now they use it to say that if you if you don't want to be subjugated or you don't want to be killed or you don't want uh, little girls being forced into marriage, then you have an uh, you have an irrational fear of Islam. Yes, uh, the, the 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 problem with this term is trying to silence people uh, uh, and stop them from criticizing Islam. So everything can go in their Islamophobia. There is a problem with the definition itself. What can you design, uh, what, what can it have inside it? Uh, for example, if I criticize the Quran, is that Islamophobia? If I criticize the Hadith, is that Islamophobia part of it or not? If I criticize, for example, um, let's say stoning, stoning uh, or, or or lashing people in Afghanistan or uh, subjugation of women or anything, does that, uh, is it included in Islamophobia or not? For example, a, a killing apostates like me, if I'm afraid of that, is that a phobia, a rational fear, or a reasonable fear? I left Morocco because of many reasons. One of them is uh, the persecution that um, believers like me face in Muslim countries. That's a reasonable fear. And actually, you cannot get asylum anywhere else unless you establish a reasonable fear for your life. So uh, actually getting asylum, it, it, it's, it, it breaks that definition. We have a reasonable fear. If I live in Afghanistan and I leave Islam and I'm afraid to be killed, then I go to UK and ask for asylum, apply for asylum and I get it. I get it on the base. I have a reasonable fear. Then when I criticize it, I will be an Islamophobe. I don't have a reasonable fear. I have a phobia. So I'm diagnosed by Muslims, but the judge actually gave me asylum because he judged that my situation has a reasonable fear for my life. And uh, I, I would say, since Muhammad said, if anyone leaves his Islamic religion, kill him, that uh, anyone who leaves the religion and understands what Islam commands would have a completely reasonable fear of being slaughtered in the name of Allah. But this is actually the apostasy and, and your background is actually a perfect example of this, because, again, yeah. I. I mean, I mean, you and I have been dealing with this topic for a long time. We've gone through the same things. But you as an apostate, a little different. Um, but again, if you just go back 10 years, when yeah. I said 10 years ago, hey, Islam says you have to kill apostates over and over again. It's no, it doesn't. You're an Islamophobe for saying that. So back yeah. then it was you're an Islamophobe for saying these things, for saying that Islam teaches these things. And they were able to dismiss our claims about Islam by saying that we have a mental disorder, or we just hate Muslims or something like that. But they were able to dismiss what we were saying and pretend that we that, that Islam doesn't teach these things. Whereas fast forward to today, now they admit everything we're saying about Islam. They admit that it teaches all these things. And they'll just say, and if you don't want us to do it to you and your wives and your daughters, and so if you don't want this to happen to you, you're an Islamophobe. And I just wanted to, uh, uh, this is a perfect time for a clip because you were on the PBD podcast and yeah. you asked some very prominent Muslim apologists, Muslim spokesmen mm -hmm. who were brought on the program, which was supposed to be about building bridges between Christians <laughs> yeah. and Muslims. And you asked them, hey, should I be killed? They agreed, of course you'd be killed under Islam. But uh, let's go ahead and uh, check out that clip. Brother, we should yeah, go forward. Yeah. What's on your yeah. mind? Because this is concerns me. Do you believe I should be put to death? I believe that the punishment for apostasy in a correct Islamic state is death. I believe that that's so the correct. You let me finish. Let me just respond, yeah. sir. I believe that that is the correct punishment, which has been revealed by God, both in the Quran and the Bible. And for Robert to turn around, I, I and asked say, you. Let, let me let me finish. I asked you, do believe I should be killed and today? I, and I answered you, sir. I yes you, or sir. no? I answered you. Yes or no? I answered you. I think you said yes. You yeah. Yeah. yeah, I said. Yeah, you answered me. In a proper Islamic <clears throat> jurisprudent uh, um, jurisdiction, yeah. an Islamic nation, all of the laws of Islam and the Sharia, as revealed by God, uh, should be applied. So, if we were in that kind of state, would you do including, it? Including, 
including I'm not the one with proper you. due process, with a proper court hearing, just like any nation of laws, the, uh, the laws of the Sharia should be applied, including the death penalty for not only apostates, but no. also blasphemers. You, you didn't insult. answer me, yes or no? We did answer Yes, you. we did answer Yeah, so I should be answer. killed. We did answer I deserve question. to be killed because I left Islam and became a Christian. According to Islamic law, an apostate like you would be killed, yes. Okay, thank you. All right, so, so notice what we have here. These are the same guys who call you a career Islamophobe. These yeah. guys call you a career Islamophobe, but they're acknowledging that if they get their way, if they get the Islamic state that they want, mm -hmm. they're going to kill you. They're going, by the way, they, they agreed that, that they would kill blasphemers as well. So I'd be killed too. So yeah. I would be killed. You would be killed. They call us career Islamophobes because they don't want, because we don't want to be killed by, yeah. in the name of, in, in, in the name of their, their God and their religion. We don't want to be killed. So we have an irrational fear of being murdered. This is insane. Yeah. yeah. It, it's, it's really um, awkward to, to say the least. And uh, let me, let me decompose the word Islam and phobia. So Muslims who accuse people like me of being Islamophobes, first of all, they gave themselves the right to diagnose me of uh, phobia. And I don't know yeah, if they have that. I mean, you can't diagnose somebody unless you have certain symptoms. They are not doctors. I mean, each phobia has to have a specialist who knows about that topic and who has the right and listen to you and see and evaluate if that fear is reasonable or not, then he will give you some medicine or something to help you, a therapy or whatever to help you get out of it. So let's say, let me agree with them. For example, if I, if I am as a former Muslim, as an ex-Muslim, I said I'm afraid of Islam to take over the West because I have seen it in a Muslim country, what it did to it. And I have seen the damage it does to society. I have seen, for example, the hatred that it teaches the women's subjugation that it teaches, I have seen in my own life how people are afraid to say their opinion about Islam because they are afraid of being uh, at least at least persecuted, if not jailed for their opinions about Islam, sometimes even worse. So if I say that, the Muslim give himself the right to tell me, you have a phobia. So what's the solution? What's the therapy I should take then? Should I recite the Quran, for example, ver chapter nine, 10 times a day so I can get used to it? Uh, I get used to jihad, I get used to all, all these things, or should I recite the hadith that tells uh, whoever left his religion, kill him? Should I recite it like 100 times a day? And like that, I will be, it will be normal to me. I will be like, yeah, I mean, killing me is not a problem. I can live with that. So uh, it's, it's, it's absurd. Yeah, it's it's absolutely absurd. And uh, it, it's just, uh, it's amazing that they've been able to condition People in power, I mean, politicians almost across the board, uh, journalists across the board, educators, entertainers. And it's, it's, I mean, it's a, it's a brilliant strategy. It's evil, but it's brilliant in terms yeah. of, uh, you take, you take a population that is very concerned about victims and protecting victims. And then even though your, your religion calls for the violent subjugation of the world, calls for all these people to be subjugated. You can just take advantage of this of, of this term. You can coin a term, and now politicians, no matter what happens in the world, you, <laughs> we said it, politicians just run and say, okay, look at this horrible thing that's happened. This is why we need to start this new uh, campaign against Islamophobia. Yes. And you say, okay, yeah. what in the world is, this, is Islamophobia? Oh, it's an irrational fear. Okay, I'm under a death sentence. Their dawah guys admit it. Their scholars admit it. Their uh, mm -hmm. apologists admit it. I'm under a death sentence. You're under a death sentence, Brother Rashid. Uh, yeah. We're under death sentence. Not everyone would be under a death sentence, but everyone everyone eventually has to uh, convert or be subjugated. Mm -hmm. Those are your options, or be killed. And if you say, hey, I don't want to convert, I don't want to be subjugated, and I don't want to be killed. Oh, then you're an Islamophobe. It, it, you could say, I mean, my goodness, you could say this about anything. You could say, it, I mean, you could, you could say, you could coin the term Naziophobe for for people yeah, who uh, exactly. don't don't want Nazis taking over the world. Yeah, and and the problem with this is, 
it, it includes everything. Let me say, for example, I will understand if Muslims want to protect themselves because not every Muslim is a terrorist, so they, they, they need a term to protect certain certain percentage of Muslims of being targeted or, or hated because they associate with others who carry jihad in the name of Allah. For example, if they want to protect themselves, they need to find another term, not this, because this is a phobia of Islam. Islam itself as a doctrine is not just a phobia and they put in it hatred towards Muslims. They put in it uh, criticism, rational criticism. They put in it like apology. Uh, um, people like me and you who criticize Islam and trying to to uh, to show people the verses and the hadiths. They put people like us who are not trying to harm anybody or we are not calling people to hate anybody. But they put everybody under that. That term, and 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 the, the 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 technique behind it is turning you. For example, let's say we are discussing apostasy in Islam. The discussion turns from a subject to me defending myself. So they attack you and your sanity. You are not you are not sane. You are insane, and you start and. Instead of discussing the topic itself, you start defending your, your mental sanity. You, you, you will be like, now I'm not Islamophobe. Like, I'm, I am, I'm not insane. I'm, not, uh, I, I'm a normal person. So see the, 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 the shift, the burden of proving that you are sane will be on you, not them discussing, for example, why there is apostasy in Islam. Mm-hmm. And notice, notice uh, the sort of, uh, if we're talking about serious problems with this, this is not just, it's not just a problem of a word being tossed around. This has real world implications because when that, when that switch, as you pointed out, happens that, hey, if I criticize something in Islam, something that Islam teaches, or if I criticize something that Muslims are doing, and I know I'm going to be labeled an Islamophobe. I'm going to be labeled a, a racist, a bigot, a hate monger, and an Islamophobe. And they're going to, I, I will be accused of having a mental disorder because of what I'm saying. Um, that has a that has real world impacts. This is this is what's behind the grooming gangs getting away in the UK uh, for years. For, for, for a couple decades even, this is what's behind them getting away with raping, drugging, gang raping, and pimping 12 and 13-year-old British girls for so long. Yeah. Prosecutors knew this was going on. Police knew it was going on. Social workers, they all knew this was going on. They had all been conditioned by calling Islam by calling them Islamophobes. They knew as soon as we say, "Hey guys, these uh, these uh, Pakistani Muslims over here are treating these treating these young girls just like prostitutes on their personal property," we've got a problem here. They know that there would be an upright. They would just be called Islamophobes. They'd lose their jobs and so on because they're, now they'd be considered racist. So they all kept their mouths shut. And the result yes. was tens of tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands, of young British girls being, again, raped, drugged, pimped, gang raped uh, repeatedly, and no one wants to do anything. And we've got the same thing in the U.S. with organizations like CARE, the, accounts, the Council on American Islamic Relations. At the moment there's a terrorist attack, any terrorist attack, pick a terrorist attack carried out in the name of Allah, Instantly, they start warning against the anti-Muslim backlash and Islamophobia. Right. And suddenly, right, I mean, the bodies are still warm that have been slaughtered yeah. in the name of Allah. And they're saying, oh, this is when we need to be worried about this backlash against Muslims. This is when we need to combat Islamophobia. And so after the terrorist attack, you'll have politicians stand up and say, this is why we need to be against Islamophobia. So, wait, yeah. what are you? Who? Yeah. And so this is this it, is the dangers of, of the, this. The question I have to ask, uh, I have two questions about it. First of all, let's reason. Let's see if we have the right, if the West has the right to be afraid of Islam as a religion. I'm, I, 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 can't, I can't say it more and more uh, every time that Muslims, there are some Muslims who don't practice all of Islam or they don't know uh, many things in Islam and they are fine. But the ones who want to carry everything in Islam 
we should worry about them because we should worry also about Islam as a doctrine. Let's reason, for example, Islam teaches uh, jihad, carrying jihad against uh, non-believers. Uh, it teaches uh, Sharia law. Sharia law has many, many things that we should be afraid of. For example, stoning, uh, hand amputation, uh, uh, crucifixion. Uh, you, you name it, and also taking taking people as um, slaves, for example, like what happened to Yazidis. Whatever video you saw about ISIS, that's that has a root in the text. So let me say this: if you have seen a video of ISIS selling the Yazidis, selling kids as slaves, and you are afraid that will happen to your country, if Muslims become the majority and one day they vote to apply Sharia, is that a reasonable fear or not? For example, people who are afraid of uh, Muslims waging jihad, should you be afraid of that or not? That's a reasonable fear. The second thing that we should ask, for example, if you are in a bus and you heard Allahu Akbar, how are you going to react? You will be afraid of that. Why? Because we have seen so many cases. That's how we learn as human beings, by experience. So if we experience many times that whoever shouts in a public square, Allahu Akbar, he's going to detonate an explosive device or, or a bomb. Should we be afraid? Yes, that's a reasonable fear. It's not a phobia because it happened many times. You will be dumb if you don't run away and try to hide because many people got got killed after Allahu Akbar. So, uh, and again, who did that to Islam? If you think Islam is innocent and has nothing to do with that, who did it? Should we bl be blamed of that or the people who carried those attacks? When 9-11 happened, if I'm afraid today that another 9-11 will happen, Am I, uh, 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 do I have a phobia or a reasonable fear? If I have seen, for example, the, the attacks in Paris and the Bataclan, should I be afraid of that to be repeated again or not? I should, if I really care about the lives of people, I should be um, worried that people like those can carry attacks everywhere. And I should warn people that there are elements in Islam who are against us, against other people, against our own existence. And what you just brought up, I mean, think about the hypocrisy here, right? Uh, so you pointed out, you know, there, there are these terrorist attacks around the world. Um, but then if we are at all concerned about future terrorist attacks carried out by jihadis in the name of Allah, we're called Islamophobes. But think about this. I mean, isn't everyone an Islamophobe at this point? I mean, when we go through security, you probably remember what what security was like before 9/11 it was totally yes. different it was very easy it was very easy you you could show up to an airport yeah. uh 15 20 minutes before your flight and just and just bolt right through there with no problems now yeah. they have all these sophisticated means of screening why because of jihad and we understand there are jihadis who want to slaughter us in the name of Allah so notice every i mean the the the, the same government and journalists and everyone else who are calling us islamophobes when we criticize islam they're all Islamophobes according to according to their own definition because they're all worried about jihadis killing them in the name of Allah. So biggest bunch of hypocrites, uh, biggest bunch of hypocrites ever. Um, but but here's here's the great irony because you pointed out that everything gets lumped together. Everything yeah. gets lumped together. So you could have someone who just hates Muslims in general. This person hates Muslims, just, just hates Muslims, doesn't trust Muslims, believes every Muslim is out to get them or something like that. That yeah. person, I think, would have, a, would have a problem. And you're right. There, there needs to be a term for that person. You can't use Islamophobia because now Islamophobia is used for everything, any sort of criticism. If I say, hey, I don't want to be killed yeah. in the name of this God, I, I'm an Islamophobe. But uh, I mean, notice here, here's the great irony in all of this. Mm. We're called Islamophobes just for criticizing what Islam teaches or what for something that Muslims do. And yeah. yet the Quran and the Hadith are filled. I mean, filled to the brim. It's filled up to the top with criticisms of 
uh, Jews and Christians and polytheists and their beliefs and so on. And it's just constantly attacking everyone for their beliefs and saying that they that we need to be violently subjugated because of our beliefs. And it's just amazing because it, that even just the level of criticism, Islam is definitely criticizing us. So it, Islam would be the most phobic religion in the world. It has a phobia of everything. It has a I phobia agree. of everything that's not that's not Islamic. I agree with you, David. And let me switch switch it around and and see, for example, uh, Muslim countries uh, how they treat Christianity, for example. The Bible is banned in many Muslim countries. Did, does the Bible teach, for example, jihad or teach terrorism or teach anything to harm people? No, but still they are afraid of it. That we can call a phobia because it's not a reasonable fear. Show me why you are afraid of the Bible. That's one thing. Second, they are afraid of people like me who converted from Islam to Christianity. We became more peaceful. We became uh, loving. We, we became so, um, so peaceful that we rejected all the terms in Islam. We rejected hatred. We rejected jihad. We rejected carrying violence in the name of God. We rejected all of that, and they are afraid of us. They arrest some of us. They persecute others. And I always asked even the police in Morocco, I said, what are you afraid of? We just gather and pray for you guys. What are you afraid of? We are not planning to overthrow the government. We're not planning to attack a mosque. We're not planning to do anything. So if you should be afraid, uh, save your resources because there are other people who are trying to harm you, like, for example, Muslim Brotherhood and like the Takfiri guys. You should be worried for, uh, about those, not us, because we are just peaceful people. So if you turn it around, actually, phobia is, uh, applies more to Islam and Islamic countries than to the West. And if you think about the real role of some of these teachings in Islam, a lot of, I mean, a lot of the teachings, are, the real core of them, the real, the, the real foundation of them is they don't want people around who can expose Muhammad as a false prophet. So two examples here, apostates. So we're talking about you. Uh, if you if you go back, part of, the re part of the real reason Muhammad couldn't stand apostates is, wait, if you've converted to Islam and then you left Islam, you may have figured something out here. You may have figured yeah. something out. And so we actually yeah. saw this. Uh, you've seen this. You're familiar with uh, Abdullah ibn Abi Sar. So this was one of Muhammad's scribes who actually yeah. was editing the Quran to make it better. And he would say things and Muhammad would say, oh yeah, that's good, put that in there. <laughs> and this guy eventually realized, he eventually realized, wait a minute, if, if Muhammad's a prophet, then I'm a prophet too. Yeah. Because, if yeah. I, because if he's a prophet and I'm, I'm improving and, and I'm adding stuff, then that would make yeah. me a prophet too. I know I'm not a prophet, so he's not a prophet. <laughs> so I'm out of here. I'm, I'm out of here. And of course, he had to die. Eventually, he, he reconverted back when you know, the blade was at his throat. But, yeah. uh, but notice, it's, notice the reasoning there. This guy could have exposed Muhammad really, really bad because yeah. his argument is a slam dunk argument. So right. Muhammad doesn't doesn't want people converting to Islam, learning about the religion, learning why it's why it's false, and then being able to go out and influence other people. So he's, notice, true. Islam is terrified of being exposed by these guys and wants to kill these guys because it's Islam that's scared. Uh, not, uh, I mean, Abdullah Abi, Ibn Abi Sar, he had a reasonable fear about Islam once Muhammad ordered his followers yeah. to kill apostates, but it's Islam is scared of him. So you've got, yeah. you've got apostates, but then also, especially since this, uh, connects to what we're talking about, Muhammad's, uh, fear of the Jews. So yeah. he spent, he spent 12 years in Mecca telling everyone, telling the polytheists and telling his followers, hey, the Jews will confirm me. The Jews will support this. The Jews know that I'm in their scriptures. Once we get around a bunch of Jews, they're all going to extend to me the right hand of fellowship and say, this guy is as good as gold. He's the prophet for the Arabs. That's what's going to happen. Finally, he moved to a city where there were three tribes of Jews. And they said, what are you talking about? You're the most obvious false prophet in history. You're not in our scriptures. Uh, we don't acknowledge you. This, what is this? Is this a joke? And then he became, he went from 
affirming the Jews as re- like authorities, a matter of a religion who can confirm him as a prophet to you can't trust the Jews. And eventually to Jews have to be uh, expelled from the entire Arabian Peninsula. And then, of course, to uh, saying, as we've seen uh, repeatedly in the Hadiths, that Jews have to eventually be completely exterminated to the point where Jews are hiding behind rocks and trees, running from Muslims, and the rocks and trees themselves are saying, hey, hey, Muslim, come kill this Jew. There's a Jew hiding behind me. And this is all because these are people who can expose Muhammad. So notice, it's Muhammad is terrified of Christians. He's terrified of apostates. He's terrified of uh, of anyone who can expose him. He's terrified of the Jews. It's like the most phobic religion you can possibly have and anytime we point out some of the problems with killing and slaughtering and maiming and chopping off body parts and, and taking sex slaves and so on, uh, child marriage, whenever we point out any of this, we're the ones who are scared because uh, because we don't want this insane, uh, th- these insane teachings uh, imposed on us by jihadis. Well, here is a short definition of Islamophobia, according to me, is cutting your tongue if you are afraid of cutting your head. So it's 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 yeah. just a way to silence you if you are afraid that you will lose your 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 head. So it's 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 really some a term to um suppress uh certain opinions to suppress people like you and me to silence them to um, scare them to attack them in their in their own sanity in, the, in their own mental health and they, they go after them, and actually it's a label um, that is used to bully people and to, mm-hmm. to make them af- be afraid of criticizing Islam. It's not anymore defending Muslims. I know there are some um, normal, peaceful people who probably got, um, they are victims of some uh, indiscrimination somewhere, but you have to defend them uh, using other terms, using other ways, not by labeling everybody, including me and others who are criticizing Islam peacefully, who are trying to reason with people, or trying to debate them, or trying to show them with proof from the Quran and the Hadith. We are not trying to um, uh, incite hatred towards anybody. We actually we are inciting. We are we are pushing people. Uh, so many times I tell people you have to love Muslims and you have to defend them because they are victims of their own religion. And we have to save them. We have to show them the truth. And you cannot save a person uh, uh, unless you love him or, or or you love her. So I am doing it personally because I love my people. I love I love the the. The, the country I came from, and I still pray for them, and I want them to know the truth. So I'm doing it uh, pushed by love, not by hatred. And you cannot, you cannot um, accuse a person like me who was born in a Muslim family of Islamophobia. How? I mean, I, I, I was born within Islam. I grew up in a mosque. How am I, I mean, a person who lived with, with snakes, you cannot accuse him of being or having a phobia of snakes if you lived uh, between snakes. I'm not trying to say Muslims are snakes. I'm just saying like uh, it's a comparison between somebody who lived in, in a, an environment where he's used to things. You cannot accuse him of having a phobia of those things. So my dad was an imam. I am born in a Muslim family. I, I was raised there. I grew up until I was 32 years old. I dealt with Muslims every day. My friends were Muslims. My teachers were Muslims. Everybody around me is a Muslim. But I still criticize Islam and I think it's bad for us as human beings. It's not a true religion. It's not something that will help or benefit humanity. And I have the right to do so. Why somebody will take that right from me by accusing me being an Islamophobe? Yes, and you, uh, you, you, uh, you showed what this is actually for. It's meant to silence people, and he, for people who, who are buying into this nonsense. Especially, I mean, you would expect intelligent people not to fall for this, but intelligent people fall for this all the time. But guys, get this through your heads: what the real purpose is? It's to silence criticism. Notice, under in a in a Muslim country where they can enforce laws against criticizing Islam then they will enforce laws 
uh, about criticizing Islam. They'll 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 throw you in prison or in some places execute you for criticizing Muhammad and the Quran. So yeah. the goal is part of Sharia. Part of Sharia is to silence criticism of Islam. Well, yeah. uh, mu various Muslim leaders, Muslim spokesmen, uh, Dawah guys, and so on. They understand that in Western nations, so in the United States and Canada and France and Great Britain and Germany and so on, they understand that in other countries, they don't have the political power, the legal power to go out and execute people for criticizing Islam. Mm -hmm. But they still want the same result. They still want no one criticizing Islam. They understand they just have to go about it in a different means. You the, Going the political route and actually taking over the country and then enforcing Sharia, that's kind of a long-term goal. What do you do in the short term so that you can eventually uh, achieve that goal? Well, you still have to block the criticism of Islam because you don't know, want people to know what the actual goal and agenda is. So therefore, well, what do people in the West tend to fall for? They tend to fall for people saying that this is a phobia or that is a phobia. Yeah. And so, okay, if that's what works in the West, we can actually, we can get a sort of Sharia light, not a fully implemented Sharia, but we can get the same result. Namely, no one wants to criticize Islam. And even if we're, I mean, even if jihadis are actually going around raping thousands and thousands of young girls, we'll get the exact same result as if it was happening in a Muslim country and no one could speak out uh, against what we're doing to the unbelievers. And so it's the exact same goal. The, 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 the goal behind Calling people Islamophobes, it's the same goal as just executing people for criticizing Islam. It's all to silence uh, critics. Um, but notice, uh, we, we're talking about Islamophobia here. We also wanted to discuss uh, anti-Semitism. Yes. Because that's also, a, that's also a term that gets used. You can start criticizing something that uh, you, you can start criticizing something about Jews and you'll hear this term anti-Semitism or anti-Semite. So yeah. uh, what, what, do you, what, do you, what do you think about the, how, how these two terms compare? Well, I think Muslims are trying to uh, compare them, make them um, side to, by side, like they are similar, but they are not because anti-Semitism has some uh, roots to it because we have seen through history, uh, recent history, what happened to the Jews, especially in Europe and Germany. So we, we had to protect them because we, we don't want people to, to start again uh, inciting people to hate them and making their way uh, to do it, to do in harm to them, like what happened to them before. So uh, anti-Semitism was a term to protect the the Jewish people from being uh, a target of hatred, of persecution, of um, many things, including elimination. And we 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 see today that was probably the right thing to do through history because now we see a rise in hatred towards Jews. People are, are chanting slogans like gas the Jews, for example, in Australia. We have seen people who, who, who are praising Hitler for what he did actually in, in, Muslim, uh, in Muslim countries. They saw even uh, the uh, Hitler's book in one of the recent findings among ha Hamas uh, Hamas fighters, they are reading Man 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 Kampf. Um, is Mein Kampf. Is that? Yeah. Yeah, Mein Kampf. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's interesting. Uh, by the way, Mein Kampf means my struggle. So maybe yeah. uh, maybe they had a, a translation and, jihad. and got my translated jihad. as my, my jihad. Yeah, it's the same word, right? <laughs> so so again, the, the term is to protect the Jews from a similar thing that happened to them in history. We don't have a similar thing that happened to Muslims because of a phobia. We don't have a similar um, uh, past with Muslims. Actually, it was the other way around. Muslims subjugated 
many countries, including my country where I came from, because it wasn't a Muslim country. It was a Christian country when you go back to history. So they invaded those countries, they subjugated people, they sold them as slaves, they imposed their religion, they imposed their language, and now they are trying to say, hey, we need a term for us too because we are being a target of hatred. That's not the same. Yeah, definitely not the same. And so if you had, if you actually had the same situation, if you had uh, people throwing Muslims into gas chambers and exterminating them and so on, I would, Rashid and I agree, we, you should have a term for that sort of thing. But that's what's, that's what's insane about all this is we simply criticize something like killing apostates or something, and then they lump us in the same category with, yeah. with Islamophobes. And it's like, wh we, what we, we don't say gas, gas Muslims. We don't say yeah. uh, kill Muslims. We, we don't say it, uh, a fight will, will, will happen with Muslims until a, each Muslim will hide behind a tree and say, uh, I mean, the tree will say, hey, Christian, there is a Muslim behind me. Imagine if we say those things in, yeah. in our churches or, or in our live shows. Yeah. If we said anything like that, you could take direct quotes from the Quran and the Hadith and just replace the word Jew with the word Muslim. And then if you were to say it, the exact same thing, just replacing the word Jew with the word Muslim, you would be called a racist, Islamophobic, hate mongering bigot. But you're not allowed to condemn it when it's calling for violence against Jews, violence against Christians, violence against uh, polytheists. Uh, as far as the, the difference between these terms, um, you, you've, you've pointed it out. There's a long history of Jews being attacked just for being Jews over yeah. and over and over again. And Douglas Murray uh, recently was doing an interview on the podcast Trigonometry, and he really pointed out a perfect perfect way to to get the the idea of what anti-semitism really is across he said when when the when the jews were poor talking about you know centuries ago in in places like europe and so on he said yeah. when the jews were were poor we hated them for being poor he says then when the jews became rich then people hated them for being rich he said when the jews didn't integrate then we hated them for refusing to integrate it's like oh you think you're separate from us you think you're better than yeah. us then when they integrated we hated them for integrating it says hey what are you what are you trying to act like you're one of us now right oh, yeah. he says uh when when they were uh, when they were stateless, we hated them for being stateless. Look at these wa these wandering Jews. They don't have their own place. Then when they got their state, we hated them for having a state. When you get to a point where no matter what the group does, you hate them for it. If they go left, you hate them. If they go right, you hate them. If they go up, you hate them. You hate them. If they go down, you hate them. That's a, that's an irrational fear, right? That's an irrational yeah. kind of hatred. It doesn't. So it's it's not really anything you're doing. I hate you as a group. And whatever you do, no matter yeah. what it is, I'm going to condemn and hate you for it. That's not that's not a parallel to what we find in Islam, where we say, "Hey, it's, we actually we just don't want to be subjugated. We don't want to have stuff blown up. We don't want uh, you taking our our daughters as sex slaves. We don't want any of this stuff." And they say, "Oh, it's just like Islam. I mean, it's just like anti-Semitism." Yeah. It it uh, let me simplify it this way: when you hate a Jew. Just because he is a Jew, that's anti-Semitism. Uh, Islamophobia is not hating a Muslim because he is a Muslim. Islamophobia is a term that we explained over and over that has everything in it. Even if you say, I don't like the Quran, it's not the word of God. Muhammad was not a prophet. As simple as this. You will be an Islamophobe. If you say, for example, I don't like violence in the Quran. I rejected it. If you reject violence in the Quran, you are an Islamophobe. So there is a huge difference. Even if you don't talk about Muslims, if you don't touch Muslims, if you say, I'm fine with Muslims, but I have a problem with the Quran, you're still an Islamophobe. Yeah, and so uh, just massive, massively different, massively different use of these two terms. Uh, there is a long history of hating Jews 
for being Jews and hating them no matter what they do. Again, if they're if they're rich, you hate them. If they're poor, you hate them. If you're if they have a state, you hate them. If they don't have a state, you hate them. No matter what they do, you you just hate them. You hate them for uh, for their race. You hate them for their religion. You hate them for for absolutely anything. It doesn't matter if they're if they're Orthodox. If they're Orthodox Jews, you hate them. If they're completely secular Jews, you hate them. Uh, and that's that's an that's an ongoing problem. Well, and take this, Muslim. take this, okay. David. For example, we have seen this before. We talked about it. So when you when you talk about Jews as being unclean, when you talk about Jews being rats, when you talk about Jews being like a donkey, when we talk about Jews being uh, turned to different animals, pigs, apes, you name it, and when you talk about Jews being the enemies of Muslims wherever they are through history, that's anti-Semitism. But when you when you say I, I uh, Muhammad was not a prophet. He married a six year uh, old uh, girl. He uh, killed the family of Sophia and then he raped her on the way back. When you say all these things, you still called an Islamophobe. And 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 actually, uh, it's the other way around. Anti-Semitism is clear in the Quran. Nobody want to point it out. And Islamophobia is not really something uh, that everybody is doing, uh, and, and it has nothing to do with criticizing Islam, because Muslims criticize Christianity and every other religion through history. They have books about Christianity. They have books against the crucifixion. They have books against the Trinity. They have books against the falsification of the Bible. And nobody accused them of Christianophobia. But still, they take the same. Uh, the, the, they do the same thing to uh, to us. We cannot do the same thing to their Quran or to, to their doctrine. Yeah, and so uh, just just putting it all together, Islam uh, Islamophobia is used to silence criticism, very very legitimate criticism. That guess what? Everyone agrees with you. Can you can ask you can ask any random person in the West? Do you believe that it's okay for men to beat their wives into uh, into submission? Everyone's going to say no. Even a, even a guy who uh, I mean, you'd have to have a really sick guy because even a guy who. <laughs> at one point got enraged at his wife and beat his wife or something like that. Later on, he would regret it. He would, he would think yeah. that it's bad and apologize. And so on. you have to be a really sick guy to just think, Oh, it's, and it's good. It's good that I beat my wife. Uh, yeah. but I mean, it, legitimate criticisms, uh, you can ask any Western, Hey, uh, if these guys come, is it okay for these guys to, to rape, you know, 11 and 12 year old girls? Is that okay? No. Oh, you, you're, you're an Islamophobe. Everyone would agree on these things, and we all do. We don't want to be. We don't want to be subjugated. We don't want terrorist attacks. We don't want uh, child marriage. We don't want uh, women being beaten into submission. We don't want apostates to be killed. We don't want any of this stuff. These are legitimate criticisms of Islam that we all agree on. Ten years ago, we were called Islamophobes for just saying that Islam teaches these things. Now, Muslims shout them from the rooftops. Yes, we teach these things because they know the population has been trained and conditioned to not attack them based on this. So they spent they spent decades conditioning people to not object no matter what they say. And now they're to the point where they can say, of course we're gonna do all this to you. And you're not gonna say a word about it because you're all terrified of being called uh, you're all being terrified. You're all terrified of being called Islamophobes. So uh, we we've we've got that. That's the actual purpose. Anti-Semitism is an actual thing. And notice, if you criticized a Jew for doing something, that's one thing. That could be a, yeah. a completely legitimate criticism. If you wanted to criticize Israel for doing something yes. specific, you say, if you wanted to say you should not have done that, you should have been more careful, IDF, yeah. that can be a completely legitimate criticism. If yeah. you just hate Jews no matter what they do, which is the problem in Islam and has been the problem for other people, Okay, that's that's anti-Semitism. That is not that it, it's not legitimate to criticize people no matter what they do. Yeah, and, uh, and if you if you see some Jews are spitting on Christians, for example, I have seen videos, and you want to say those are bigots. Yes, you can say that. If you have Absolutely. seen this, if you have seen a Jew um, attacking a Palestinian and just beating him just because he hates him, yeah, you can say that. You can say he's a bigot. He's he's full of hatred. He's a racist. You can say that. But like you, you take the whole the whole race of Jews through history, and you label them and give them a label. That's anti-Semitic. Actually, 
Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's it's exactly what we don't do with Islam. We distinguish between Muslims who are actually uh, following and trying to implement Muhammad's commands and those who uh, e either don't know about them or have reinterpreted them. There are plenty of Muslims who reject certain sources and therefore reject the teachings in those sources. So we, di we're, we, we distinguish between different kinds of Muslims. You've never heard us say all Muslims support this or all Muslims are bad because of this or, or mm -hmm. we need to do something to all Muslims to deal with this. You've never heard that sort of thing from us. But in Islam, yes, it's, it's notice it's over and over again, it's fight the people of the book. Fight the people yeah. of the book. It's a it's a general command. Uh, Surah five verse eighty two. The Jews are the most vehement, vehement yeah. in hostility yeah. towards the Muslims. Uh, Surah ninety eight verse six. Jews and Christians are the worst of creatures. Yeah. Uh, so these are just do not blanket. take Jews and Christians blanket. as friends. Uh, as they as are well, friends of, they are friends of each other. Yeah. Yeah. They are friends of each other, and so. Yeah, so the point it's, is that we don't we don't make these generalized uh, com these generalized statements about Muslims because we want to, we want to distinguish between people who actually want to subjugate us and people who don't. We want to draw these distinctions. Muhammad didn't. Muhammad didn't want to draw those distinctions, it's, and it's built into Islam. Uh, all right, well, I think we have covered everything we want. Any any final yeah. thoughts on uh, anti-Semitism and Islamophobia? And I, I, I just want to say people should think. I, I know that uh, Muslims and non-Muslims would watch these videos. Um, if you are a Muslim, just think about it. Don't, don't really um, think it's personal. It's not against any Muslim. It just uh, let's think about it. And uh, as I was saved and, and I got out of this hatred, this, this bubble, and, and, and I really left it behind me and I got, I, I feel I'm free of every hatred. I don't hate anybody. I think you should do the same because that will free you from a lot of things. It's a, it's a burden that you will take and um, it's not good for you. It's not good for humanity. It's not good for anybody. Yeah, and I would just say, um, as we close out, uh, to, to all you Muslims who are watching, um, when you complain about something that that Jews are doing, uh, if you complain that that the, the ID you know the IDF is uh, uh, sending rockets over and uh, hitting people in Gaza, when you condemn these sorts of things, um, why don't you do the same when it's uh, Muslim on Muslim violence? Why don't you do the same when it's Saudi Arabia killing Muslims in Yemen? Uh, why don't you do the same when it's uh, Assad killing Muslims? Who, who, by the way, they're they're killing far, far, far more Muslims than the IDF uh, is killing. And we don't hear a peep about that. So the real question is, why? And what you should be reflecting on right now is, why, when a Muslim kills a Muslim, do I not have any problem with it? We don't have protests. Uh, but as soon as a Jew is involved, it's 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 an international it's an international uproar why is that because uh we would we would say it has something to do with anti-semitism if you have a better explanation that is not simply rooted in uh hatred uh, against jews which we find from muhammad himself uh we'd love to hear the explanation for why that is all right everyone we'll have uh, many more topics coming up in the near future and i'm sure uh, lots of uh, lots of issues with islamophobia and anti-Semitism are going to be coming along for future discussions. But uh, again, again, think about think about how you use these terms. Think about why you use these terms. Uh, this this is manipulation. The, the the term Islamophobia is used to manipulate people, and so uh, that's what I say to Muslims, to you non-Muslims. Don't fall for this. It's stupid. All right. Thank you so much. God bless you all. <laughs>